since um, I've had four young boys at home, um, my memory hasn't been very reliable. Um, it's not unusual that I forget to pick up my kids at school. So <laughs> I'd like to ask, uh, well, I'd like to apologize ahead of time for bringing my notes with me up on stage. <laughs> so. Uh, so um, I have a design studio in Shanghai. We have um, four stores, and uh, we design uh, women's and children's clothing made by underprivileged women and children. Mm, they come to us um, illiterate, mostly illiterate, uh, very little skills, um, some homeless, some special needs, and we devote our time and patience to train them, teach them how to sew, um, teach them how to cut, and uh, to make beautiful products that the market will buy, um, give them a steady income so that hopefully they can have a better future. Um, they're not so different from the people that my grandfather used to help decades ago. They're also not too different from my grandfather himself. My grandfather's family came from China. They left Fujian province during the Qing dynasty to travel to the Philippines. They were very poor, so my grandfather didn't have much schooling. He had to work at the age of nine, and uh, through perseverance and hard work, he rose to become the corn king of the country. He was very wealthy, and uh, he died a very well-respected man. Um, so being the uh, third generation of our family business, my cousins and I were prepared and trained very hard to not squander the family fortune and um, not to lose it during our lifetime. So we had a strict regimen of obedience classes. We had to be very well educated. We had to be loyal. We had to live simply. And we had to have a um, moderate lifestyle. Um, these were the values that were instilled in me as a little girl. Um, but um, over time, there was the uh, unspoken values that I uh, observed through my grandparents' lives. I um, witnessed um, my grandfather and grandmother treating their employees extremely well. They housed them, they cooked food for them, they um, took care of them when they were sick. My grandfather uh, was known to have um, sacrificed or actually risked his life for his neighbors um, to lead a guerrilla war against the Japanese. Um, he also um, volunte uh, volunteered and sponsored um, hundreds of schoolhouses um, all over the country through his business. So, um, so when uh, both of them passed, um, there were weeks of uh, people lining up to say goodbye to my grandparents. We didn't know them, they were strangers, uh, strangers who benefited from their charity and kindness. And I vividly remember my grandmother's words over cracking watermelon seeds. She said that um, we came here with nothing and uh, we now have everything, most of what we need. And we need to remember to be grateful always and to give back always. So my grandfather made his family promise that when China opened its doors, that the family business will come and invest to serve China. My father stayed passionate and committed to that promise. I once visited the offices of uh, one of the largest supermarket, um, supermarkets in town. And I saw on a large uh, wall photos of all the uh, petty thieves that um, stole from the supermarket. And there were photos of them with their products that they stole. Um, I was 13, and I was shocked at one specific picture. It was um, 
tiny woman or girl. She looked like a living skeleton. She had long, dark hair. She looked barely alive. And in front of her was a really tiny can of infant powdered milk. And I was confused. I didn't understand why such a wealthy business could not afford to spare a can of milk for a child. I pondered about this inequality. Growing up as an overseas-born Chinese, um, I'm part of a privileged class that vacationed overseas, have a few passports, uh, went to private school all over the country or all over the world. Um, and um, our, we were driven, we're all driven to excel, to achieve, and to exceed our elders' achievements. Our ancestors traveled far from China for greener pastures. Our stories are about perseverance, hard work, and success despite dire circumstances that we have to go through. It's about overcoming challenges. However, part of that heritage are stories about survival, poverty, and self-sacrifice. So for my generation, poverty has become but a distant, inconvenient reality. We don't need to overcome it. We can't change it, because changing it means giving up something of ours for others. Since coming back to China, I've met orphans, homeless, special needs, and families who can barely feed their children. And I've learned to admire them because they've sold everything they have so that they could take care of their children who are suffering from brain infection, cerebral palsy, and other severe disabilities. All they need is um, a job that they can do from home so they can care for their child, so they can bring food to the table, buy some medicine, save a little bit of income so they can start a little store for extra income and savings. So gradually, over time, I realized that though my grandfather made a commitment to invest in China, come back and serve the country to help it grow strong, that the real job, the real work is with the marginalized individuals that are pushed aside for others to prosper. It's not enough to bring back our fortune to the motherland and to build it up. It's to serve its people in every action, every word, every deed. What's the future generation going to look back to and judge us on? Did we feed the homeless? Did we care for the sick? Um, are orphans abandoned? Are the women abused? There's a need to connect the lives of the weak and the poor to the wealthy and the strong. A need for businesses that can make the commitment to hire and invest in the special needs, set up shop in poor cities, buy supplies from a small family, partner with a social enterprise, sell at lesser margins so the employees can get better wages. Why is there so much emphasis on growth, progress, and so little on social impact? How are we affecting the poor with our lifestyle, our decisions, our expenditures, every day, we impact them, they live among us. They're lonely, they're helpless, and they're poor, while we drive by in our fancy cars, wearing our shoes that can feed them for months. So, just as I learned the value of charity by watching how my grandparents lived, I hope that my children will lead, lead lives that have social impact beyond economic gains. That they will strive to achieve social goals for the common good instead of the relentless pursuit of material possessions and wealth accumulation that preoccupies our generation. After all, 
a country's greatness lies not in its gold, brick, and mortar, but it's in the hearts of its people. Thank you.